Hello guys and in this video we'll be talking about transgenic mice. So what are transgenic mice? You probably heard this name a million times but you don't have any idea. So this is the right video for you. I'm going to talk about very basic overview of what is transgenic mice. Now first of all transgene means you are substituting a original wild type gene of an organism with a gene of your interest. Right? That's simply termed as transgene. Now transgenic mice in that sense is the mice of which one gene or two gene of your desire you are eradicating with a gene of your interest to see the physiological impact change that's what transgenic mice, mice is now suppose we want to study that if this mice is not having a particular gene then what is going to be the case or if that mice is having a slight variation of a gene then what is going to be the physiological impact that's why we produce transgenic mice and it's a blessing for molecular biologists and cell biologists. So let's study. Now for making a transgenic mice, what we are, it's a combination of recombinant DNA technology as well as uh, the physiology of mice and all those things and cell biology also. Now in this case we are always dealing with pure organism that is mice. We are not doing any cell culture, we are just taking a live mice. But before going into that, we need to change the gene of the mice and we are substituting a gene of mice with our desired gene. So obviously the first thing we require for this process is a gene of our interest. So gene of our interest. This is the first thing that we need once we have that. Now second important thing is gene to be substituted. To be substituted. Now there should be a very important relationship between these two genes because if you want to substitute a gene with our desired gene either we need to take a process uh, help of a process called recombinant DNA technology using plasmid and vector vector process right normal process this is an example that I've used but in this case we generally do not use this process we use natural way of recombination so we also use recombination so we, we use recombination process for substitution of a particular gene with our desired gene inside mouse. So for that what we need to do we simply take mouse egg uh, embryo. So what is mouse egg normally and inside this egg cytoplasm there is a cell of uh, the pronucleus of the mice uh, or egg and, and then sperm is entered during the fertilization and we then get a small pronucleus from the sperm so this is from male this is from female this is uh, the egg pronucleus this is the sperm pronucleus now after the fertilization so obviously after fertilization of this mice egg or uh, then the egg is converted into the zygote having 2n number of chromosomes we are doing a simple trickery and what we take we simply take micro needles very very tiny needles and using that micro needle we are simply injecting the our desired gene which we need to add inside this mice chromosome so we take our desired gene so once our desired gene is inside what happens let's zoom in so let's say this is the mouse chromosome so let me draw the mouse chromosome here so the mice chromosome is there. I'm just drawing one pair. Now suppose there is a gene. Suppose this is a normal in normal condition. This is the gene that I need to uh, substitute. For example, so we just put our desired gene in. Once we put our desired gene here, our desired gene just replaces this actual gene or wild type gene that is present in mice chromosome, right? Or mice DNA, whatever. Now for this process, we actually rely on recombination. Now recombination can be site specific uh, recombination here. Now in this case we actually place a gene. Now normally that's why I've told you that there should be a very good similarity between the gene of our interest and gene what we need to substitute. So we are producing such kind of genes because obviously if you need to substitute a particular gene we will put a gene that is having a similar kind of function something altered altering with that particular gene, with the target gene. Otherwise, if you put something completely opposite kind of gene, it will create a horrible mess, uh, the organism will fail to live, and we won't get any result, right? So usually, we are substituting those genes, and whatever genes we are substituting, and whatever genes with we substituting, both the genes are having kind of similarity, slight alteration for 
noticing the effect and physiological impact. So in this case, we put that chain in. So as a result, what will happen? It will simply take out this black gene from this place and simply insert this our gene into the place. And this whole process is done using recombination. Recombination is very good in this place. Now recombination obviously, once whenever we're talking about recombination, it always based on chance. So probability of uh, is always there for our gene to be incorporated, for our gene not to be incorporated. So everything is here related. So if we do this thing and we let this uh, nucleus to be fused and allow it to grow uh, uh, to a particular embryo of, uh, of mice and finally to the adult mice, then we need to see the different physiological impacts. And how can we know that whether our gene is inserted or not? And we can check it once the mice is in adult form. We can take out their DNA, we can extract the DNA of mice, we can run a PCR for, um, for screening, we can run for screening, we can run a PCR and by looking at the PCR results, we can form. So among a list of a huge number of mice, uh, when once we conduct the experiment, many number of mice. Now finally, we get the results. Actually, in, in lab, we get this result correct for 10 to 40 percent of the time. So among the whole population that we tested, from 10 to 40 percent of that population are actually this gene inserted. And we found this gene inserted, right? So 10 percent of the mouse of whatever we experimented, whatever we substituted, we find actually the gene present. So we take that percentage of mice. Now one problem, another problem is always there. That is not all the genes of the mice is uh, transgenic. Because remember, we've done this in the embryonic phase, remember? Before, even before any kind of blastulation, gastrulation, and all this process, even before the fusion of two pronucleases. So we are eradicating all the chances. And in this process of germline cells and transferring gene into the germline cells, we are assured that yes, this gene is going to be implanted in all the cells of the uh, mice body. But actually, it does not occur. We can't find a mice, and it's very rare to find a mice is having all the cells of body, or all the body tissues, or all the major body tissues having that transgenic gene. But it, it, you know, it is very, very required for our experiment. So we can get this result for 10 to 40 percent of the population experimentation. So once we get this result, we we screen those 10 to 40 percent of those organisms. We take them. Then we do our further experiments, then we look for the physiological impact of the gene. Suppose we change the gene, we modify the gene, and we want to see the effect due to the modification of that gene into the mouse, or due to the modification or mutation of that gene into the mouse. So we want to see that. Then we can see in those germline cells. Now we can use those uh, mice now, we can breed those mice, and in the future generation we can use that mice. Now usually transgenes are kind of stable for two, three generations, but if you do it for more than three, four, five, six generations, again, you are going to see that not all the body cells are going to be that transgenic anymore, because uh, chances are always there, because in recombination have done this process, and recombination can also restore the wild type too. So that's why this thing is always there. A possibility is always there for not having what you want to have. So we need to do it more again and again to finally make sure what we want, we get. Right? So that's it, guys. Thank you.